What's going on guys? So I know this is not kind of in line with the standard videos that I would put on my channel, um, at least the Big Truck Big RV channel, but for the BTBRV Life channel, you know, it's all about other stuff. So this may interest you, it may totally not interest you, but it's certainly something that interests me since I think by now most of you know that I also play drums. That said, um, I have three pedals in front of me here, and these are all bass drum pedals for those of you who are watching the channel just for its entertainment value and not because it's related to anything that you may actually care about. But, you know, I have three bass drum pedals here. I have a DW5000 series, which is kind of like their upper end, but not their highest series, which is the 9000. I have an Iron Cobra 900 series, and I also have this Griffin pedal. Now, Griffin is a brand that I don't know how long they've been around, probably six, seven years, I'm guessing. Um, they sell a bunch of hardware, cymbal stands and pedals and hi-hat stands that appear to be really good value products. So I decided to order one because they're incredibly affordable. I mean, this pedal was like 40 bucks. Just for comparison's sakes, a new DW5000 series pedal is about $300. A new Tama Iron Cobra, which this one is pretty much new, is $250, $40. And there are pedals that kind of range that entire gamut. You can get a lower-end Tama pedal for $150. You can get a lower-end DW pedal for $150. But for $40, the question is, is this a pedal that you should consider? And I am actually going to say no. This is a pretty horrible pedal. And let me explain why. Well, first of all, let me explain what I thought I was getting. So when I went on Amazon and I saw this pedal, um, I was pretty impressed with the pictures. I was pretty impressed with some of the videos I had seen on YouTube uh, going back a couple of years and some of the things that this pedal was supposed to be able to do um, that ultimately it doesn't do and ultimately it fails at. And let me kind of explain some of those. So first and foremost, uh, the pedal that I got is not the same pedal that was shown on Amazon. It's changed. It's the same company. It has some of the same features, but it has significantly been decontented or uh, reduced in terms of features and, and quality. Uh, it's not the same pedal, and I'll explain that here in a second. So when you look at your higher end pedals, and this pedal right here is probably about 25 years old, so it still plays, it still works, it's, it's old, it's kind of this old, trusty, reliable pedal. It's never had a crazy failure other than the Delta hinge right here, which I recently replaced. Um, but aside from that, it's just an old school, reliable pedal. They give you some cool adjustment capabilities, like I can kind of adjust the beater head right here by moving this to two other holes that are available for me to put it in, which would essentially make it sit like this, depending on where I adjust it. Um, it's got a cool little offset adjustment here so you can crank it down onto your bass drum hoop without actually needing to reach under the pedal like many cheaper pedals have. But you can see they all have a version of that, which is nice. So if you wanna clamp this to your bass drum hoop, it, it makes it much more convenient, especially if you're in a hurry and you're trying to get it there so you don't have to reach under your pedal to clamp it down. Those of you who play drums will know what I'm talking about. And pretty much any of your mid to high end pedals are gonna have a feature like that. So it's cool to see that on a $50 pedal, sorry, a $40 pedal, you have that cool feature right there. Now, the first thing I noticed, of course, once I got the box in, which is over there on the floor, um, it was just wrapped in plastic. The beater head was off of it. And, you know, I didn't really expect a lot considering I only paid 40 bucks. But what I did expect was that I would get the same pedal that they showed on Amazon. And let me show you a comparison of what I got to what I thought I was supposed to get. Okay, so from five feet away, it seems like you're getting a pretty similar pedal. But when you get up close to it, you'll see that, again, they removed a lot of features that would have made this a pretty remarkable value. And when I say removed, again, I've seen YouTube videos of this pedal and people reviewing it talking about some of the features that it has that this one no longer has. So if you're buying this pedal in 2023... Uh, unless they make some additional changes to it, you're going to have a pedal that is remarkably different than not only the picture in the description, but also the pedal that you might have reviewed or seen reviews on on YouTube. So first of all, um, this whole assembly right here, right, this is where your spring is. This basically allows you to adjust to determine how much pressure it takes here to move the beater arm. Well, the 
the actual pedal in the picture on Amazon has another kind of a, a little angle gear right here. And it allows this spring to move within kind of a bearing to allow it so it doesn't just stretch from that bottom point. Let me give you an example of what's going on. So my Tama pedal, this has this really cool rocker arm right here. Watch what happens with this whole assembly as I move the beater head. The whole thing tilts right here. Um, on the current version of the DW5000, it also has a version of that right here. They replaced this solid piece with this really cool bearing tube that also rotates this entire assembly. Why is that important? Because the most common failure points on a spring right here is while you're playing, this breaks or this breaks. And if you don't have any way to alleviate the friction that builds up there, a spring failure will cause your entire bass drum beater to fail. And imagine if you're in a concert and all of a sudden you don't hear any more bass drum. That's what will happen. So you can see how it rocks right there to make sure that this portion isn't building friction inside of this piece that it's inserted into. When you look at this pedal, it's the same as this old school DW, right? Basically, this piece right here will build friction, and over time it can cause this spring to fail here on the end. The picture on the Amazon description of this actually shows that they put a kind of like a bearing right here, a roller. So there's no friction that's formed here. It basically rolls, and you eliminate the chance of friction causing that to prematurely fail. So that's the first thing that is decontented. It's not the same. And I know for 40 bucks you shouldn't expect a lot, but you should at least expect what they show you in the picture and what many other people have purchased. But again, they just changed the pedal. They made it significantly cheaper, um, but not telling you this. You have to actually get the pedal to see how much cheaper it is. Um, also, the actual beater head angle adjustment. So you typically are going to have the ability to modify your angle from this area right here by adjusting this, as well as on some higher end pedals, you have the ability to adjust it right here. So I can loosen this and I can actually rotate this whole arm anywhere around I want to this area. So I can adjust the beater head angle however I want. On the picture, and their description, it shows that you can do that here as well. It shows that it's a similar type of clamp setup to where it clamps around a, a center portion. You can simply loosen it and you can adjust your beater head angle. But on this one, you can't do it. The only thing I can do here is I can loosen this to remove the beater head. And right here is this is just kind of like a quick lock. It just lets you know where your beater head needs to drop into without passing too far if you're going to be removing it and reinstalling it. So yeah, this piece is no longer the same, and now you don't have the ability to adjust the beater head. So like I was showing on the DW, how you can adjust this to different holes in here, which will also kind of adjust the beater head and the tilt of the pedal. You can also do that on this, this Tama Iron Cobra pedal as well. You can adjust it right here, and I can make all sorts of adjustments to how I want the angle of the pedal to sit and the beater head. You can do it on here, but they used to have a much more robust mechanism here. This piece is entirely different than what's in the picture. What's in the picture is a much larger piece that actually has kind of like a set screw going into a, another piece of metal which then clamps onto this. The problem with this is if you have any type of friction inside of this portion right here, it's going to wear away at that, and eventually you're not going to be able to tighten it, or you're going to have to tighten this down so much that you'll strip it out and it, it'll just fail on you. This is such a cheaper mechanism than what they showed in the picture and what they advertised in previous videos and what you see whenever you, you do research on this. So I'm imagining they tried to severely reduce the cost of this pedal um, in terms of manufacturing. It's still the same price to you as a purchaser, but they just took away all the really cool features that made this an ultimate value, that made it a really, really killer deal. Um, it is still dual chain, which is nice. My pedal came a little crooked, and you can see the play right here. Look at this pedal. I can't move it at all side to side. I can move it up and down, but I can't move it at all. DW pedal, I can't move it at all side to side. I'm moving the whole pedal, right? There's no play here at all, but look at this. Another example. These don't move at all, and you can hear the noise that that creates. So imagine you're playing and you're hearing all that noise, and you have your drum mic'd. So that noise can equate to noise coming through your microphones as well. And on this one, 
It's just this one has a little bit of noise because the bearing in here after 20 years is starting to wear out a little bit, but it's still very smooth in terms of playability. The Iron Cobra is super quiet. And this thing right here is just super rackety because that has to be the cheapest hinge mechanism I've seen. It looks like it's actually, you know, really sloppy inside of this piece. So again, that is just really, really horrible quality. Um, in my opinion, I would just save an extra 40 bucks, get an $80 Ludwig pedal or an $80 lower end pedal, or even buy one pre-owned that is of a higher quality uh, with more precision and better features, as opposed to getting this really, really junky Griffin single bass drum pedal. Um, the beater head even. If you look at beater heads on all of these, there's no movement here. I can't take this head and twist it at all. On the Tama, I also can't do it. The Tama actually gives you these really cool interchangeable heads, which is awesome. But on this one, not only is there movement here, I can literally unscrew the head, which you can actually see the glue right here and the slop in this thing. And when people say you get what you pay for, um, for 40 bucks, you're actually getting what you pay for. It's it's pretty crappy. I don't know if I would have felt that way a year ago, just based off of some of the YouTube videos and some of the other things that I saw. A lot of folks said it was actually a pretty good pedal, but for what you're paying in 2023, this feels like a pedal you'll pick up at a pawn shop is kind of like a, a, here, look at the super cheap pedal we can sell you for a super cheap price. And then still has some spurs to go into the ground here to grip it, but the springs are super sloppy. Really cheap whenever you look at like the DW springs, it's a much more precise spring. So as you crank it down, it actually compresses evenly. This one starts to bow out and come off the end. The spring just feels really cheap. Um, this adjustment right here to tighten it against your, your hoop actually feels okay. It doesn't feel like there's anything wrong with that. The weird thing is, is that it used to be on this side and it's typically on this side whenever you look at really any other pedal, but they moved it from the pictures you see in Amazon from this side to this side. And I really don't understand why. Um, I guess to keep the mechanism they have here, it couldn't be on this side, otherwise it would hit this. But I think it used to come off the back right here, similar to these other pedals versus putting it right in line with where the springs are. Um, aside from that, the mechanism that they use to actually hold the chain on is also pretty horrible. You can see how it's not even straight and I've tried to straighten it out a couple times. Um, it's not the coolest setup. The chain actually looks okay. It looks like it has a quality chain on there. And also the toe stop. So the toe stop right here, which prevents your foot from sliding too far up, usually it's an option for other pedals. They include it, but it's also the same screw. It's a Phillips head screw here on the bottom, and it's the same screw that holds the chain on. And that's kind of weird because if you don't want the toe stop, you can't take it off because there's nothing that will retain the chain anymore. So you have to have it on there. And some people don't like toe stops. So that, that could be an issue for some folks. Um, the pedal board itself, if you want to talk about cheap, it feels like it'll break. I don't know if it will. I don't know how long you would have to play for it to break. But the material itself just, I mean, if you look at it just from the side, it, it is entirely different than the strength of a higher end pedal. And I'm not even saying you have to go out and buy a $250, $300 pedal. I'm just saying that you can find a $60 or $80 pedal that's probably far superior to this thing. But overall, um, I don't even want to really use it to play just because of that slop right there. I mean, you can really hear it. It's really sloppy and it's just not the type of pedal that I would ever use to play because the microphone going into my bass drum, the microphones around the bottom, you'll hear that noise and it will add to noise that you have to figure out how to remove or deal with if you're recording. And even if you're practicing, I don't think this is a pedal I would get. I would rather kind of do the buy once, cry once, go for like an $80 pedal, something a little bit nicer um, that will last you longer from a reputable brand like Ludwig or even some Tama products. You can buy pre-owned Iron Cobra pedals for probably a hundred bucks and you'll have something that will last much 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 longer and you won't have to worry about it breaking the first time you decide to take it to a show and you're playing and all of a sudden something snaps because it was just built super super cheap. So typically I wouldn't be this critical of a product like this but I was just so surprised at the differences between this pedal and what I thought I was getting. And what I mean by that is what it actually showed that I should have been getting on Amazon. So big thumbs down, um, not happy with this purchase at all. Probably going to send it back because to me, it's just a pretty horrible product, to be honest. Um, I might just do something else with it. I don't even know. It's, it's, 
it's not a product that I would keep because it just isn't trustworthy and reliable. That's probably the biggest thing. Anyways, guys, I uh, sure hope you enjoyed the video. If, even if it's not related to anything you typically would watch my channel for, I know there's some drummers that watch my channel. Maybe they considered getting this as kind of like a backup pedal. I wouldn't even trust it as a backup pedal. I would go for, you know, a pedal. You could probably get 60 bucks for a DW5000 that's several years old and have a quality backup pedal versus paying $40 for something that you don't know how well it's going to last you. This is the equivalent of super cheap Chinese tires on an RV. There's my RV reference. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you again real soon.